Hi everybody, this is Michelle, Crazy Homemaker, Mandolin, Crock, Stamper, Cutting Board and Knife, and Cabbage. What am I going to be making today? Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm bruising the cabbage. That's why I'm stamping it. That's what the stamper's for. Bruising the cabbage with the salt so that it releases juices. I haven't been doing this very long. I don't have any juice yet, but it'll it'll slop it down to almost pretty much nothing other than um, vegetable fibers. Um, and that's what's going to create a ferment. The ferment is the salt going to keep it from um, spoiling and you have to make sure you have enough salt and you have to pound the, the crap out of the cabbage to give it to let it give up its juices so that the ferment can start. But that's all you do and I'll go over a little more whenever I get some more of this pounded. Okay I'm getting some pretty good juice down there. You can, you can see the juice coming up. Um, I'm going to pound it a little bit more and then I'll work on the rest of the sauerkraut or the other head of cabbage. Uh, maybe two heads the way this is looking. This is almost one head of cabbage. I only have just a little bit more left to put in here and that's only going to probably fill it, you know, maybe one third full, maybe if I'm lucky. Okay, I'm going to be putting just maybe a tad bit more of pickling salt, canning and pickling salt in the bottom of my crock, just a little bit for good measure, just not too much, maybe, that's about a tablespoon, that's gonna, that should be pretty much good enough to just put in there, alrighty, that's about it, and then now it's time to start flopping in the cabbage, I pounded it for probably a good 45 minutes, and that's just one head of cabbage, and it started squirting me in the face, so I think that's a good sign that I got a lot of juice in there. It's probably a good sign that I've got enough juice in there. But I will pound it again once it gets into the, the crock. Yeah, when I get the, the rest of it into the crock. So I will be back shortly after I get this done. It's messy. Okay, the first head is in there, and I'm right, and it's only about that much full. I'll probably need to go out and buy quite a few more heads just to fill this crock up to here. Any of these little leaves here that um, I can't put safely through here because I am being bad. I am not using my glide. Yeah, there's my glide, and it it's hard to try to keep anything attached to it. So I'm waiting until I get um, down maybe a half an inch away from that blade because that blade will slice my finger really well. And I'm um, hand slicing the, the big leaves to get them to, to shred so that it looks like cabbage. Okay, head number two pounded. Half of it is juice, and that's going into the crock. Head number two is in there, and that is about, that's about halfway full, about halfway. I have one more head of cabbage over there I'm going to process, and then I'll bring it back to show you what, what that looks like filled into here. Okay, you can see, I think, that whenever I just barely touch this, you can see that juice, which is coming up from down below from the cabbage. That's all cabbage juice and salt. So what I'll do is I'll take all of these, take this and, and lightly tamp it down so that all the juice comes to the top. And then I have my best cabbage leaves and I'm going to place them in on top of this cabbage to hold it down because when I put my weights on it I want it to um, hold the cabbage underneath the, the liquid and I don't want that to disappear I don't want to have to go fishing for my weights not that I'm, it's gonna happen I'm not sure that that's 
going to happen. Pardon my terrible photography skills here. But, um, yeah, that's what we want to do. We want to keep every bit of cabbage that we can underneath the weights. Okay, the cabbage is on. Let's put the weights in. Weights come in two parts. I hope that, whoops, almost not enough. Push that up against the wall. The wall, push the cabbage down. I see some liquid. Let's see if I can do this without breaking anything. Alrighty. Okay, we see liquid, liquid, liquid. Alrighty, that's good. That's what we want to see. We want to see liquid. And that's going to help keep a, an airlock on the cabbage so it doesn't come above and hit with the air and possibly spoil. I'm going to walk this over to where I'm going to place it on my counter for right now and then we'll finish up. Okay, it's over on my counter now. I've marked it with, I probably just put crowd on there. It's a plain old painter's tape, 1129.22, the day it's in. The reason I like this crock, this is why I bought this crock, and I just recently bought it, is because this right here holds water. And this lid, you see this slit right there? It will go into the water and make like an airlock where the bubbles can come out. There's two of them, one on each side. So when I put this on and it's in that water, whoa, here we go, creates an airlock, but the fermenting bubbles will come out, which is what we want, which is what we want to happen, because if it doesn't, then this little lid will probably blow off and break. So um, this will keep the bugs out. This will keep the air out. Fermentation can take place in here using the pickling salt, which is non-iodized. The reason um, you don't use iodized salt for canning is because it'll cloud the water and it'll, it can possibly fail your whole mix and you don't want to do that. So unidized salt, which is the canning and pickling salt, and that's even good enough to put into your salt shaker and you can get iodine from other places, but um, that, which is where I would rather get my iodine from and uh, my food. So we will wait. Hopefully this will be done by uh, New Year's so that we can have our New Year's pork and sauerkraut. And we will enjoy that if that can take place. So I've got to keep an eye on this. I'll probably keep you updated as to how it's going um, here and there. And uh, have a great day. And I hope you enjoyed this little bit of um, part of my craziness. Take care. Bye.